NCAA tournament bracket scoring is terrible, and you know it. Hey, thanks for watching. So today I'm going to talk about the scoring system for NCAA brackets. You know, the kind that you have at your office, the kind that you do with your friends and family. And I'm going to give my own scoring method I'm going to share with you, which I think is the absolute best way to score a bracket. So right off the bat, the first most traditional way, I think half the brackets are scored this way, where you get a point uh, in the rounds. So I think it goes, uh, first round is one point, second round is two points, then four points, eight points, 16, and then 32 for the final. And we all know the problem with this, right? It totally favors someone to just chalk their whole bracket. Choose favorites. My brother-in-law's mom always does really well in our family tournament. And she always chooses favorites, right? Her final four will be four number ones. And she always seems to do well. <laughs> um, and that scoring method is just not great. It's great if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have any idea about basketball. And uh, it's exciting for that matter. But I think we can do better. I've looked at some other scoring methods that are out there, such as the one, two, three, four, five, six multiplier. So you get... Uh, one point in the first round, two points in the second round, three in the third round, etc. The issue with this is it really favors the early rounds uh, much more so than the later rounds. Uh, that's no good. But one of the overall problems that I see with this is that it does nothing to encourage people to vote for the underdog, to pick upsets, things like that. That's the real issue that I see. I have seen some upset special type brackets that give you a lot of points for picking upsets, but you don't want a system set up so that you only want to choose upsets. That That's no good either. A method online that I have seen is using a Fibonacci sequence. If you don't know that, it's a mathematical sequence. It's one starts 1-1, one, one, we'll skip that. But then 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. So the first round you get two points, second round three points, third round five points, etc. And I like that because it does balance uh, the earlier and the later rounds. So the method that I have developed, it's based on the Fibonacci sequence, but it has an upset bonus. And I think that my upset bonus is the most fair that I have seen. So I know that many people think that only experts should have opinions. And who are you, Tom? You're just some idiot out in Portland. Why, why do we care what you think? You don't have to care what I think. I'm presenting a different alternative, and I'd like to know if you think it's any good or not. I understand that it's complicated, but, you know, a lot of things in life are complicated. Okay, so let me try to explain what my formula is for the best idea for brackets. Essentially, I'm using the Fibonacci sequence as a base multiplier for each round. So the first round is worth two points if you get it right, and it's a favorite. Second round, three points if it's a favorite. So for each round, you will get that number of points... And there is an upset bonus. Now, the upset bonus is a little complicated. You take the seed differential for the round. You will then multiply that by the base number for the round. You will then add, additionally, the seed differential for that round and take the square root of that sum. That will be your bonus your upset bonus uh, for that game. So I'll just give you a couple examples so this may make sense. As a side note, anyone that does not choose their alma mater in the first round of the tournament is a terrible human being. Two of my alma maters are in this tournament, so I definitely have to choose them. For this first example, I'll choose New Mexico State. So as an example, New Mexico State is playing Clemson in the first round. If Clemson won, that would be worth two points. They're the favorite. If New Mexico State won, you would get an upset bonus. So how to determine this is you will take the seed differential. New Mexico State is a 12. Clemson is a 5. There's a 7 differential for the seed. You would multiply that by the round. So the round is worth 2. So that would give you 14. You would then add the seed differential back. That would give you 21. Square root of 21. A bonus of 4.58 points plus the additional two for winning the game. 
So Clemson, you would get two points. New Mexico State, you would get 6.58 points. That is very enticing to maybe choose New Mexico State in the first round, but it's not too big that you'll definitely choose an upset because you have to win to get these points. So I'll give you a second example. TCU, my alma mater, where I went to graduate school, is playing Michigan State in the second round if both teams advance. So the second round is worth three points. So if Michigan State won, it would be worth three points. But if TCU were to win, and they're probably not going to win, Michigan State is a fantastic team. But if they were, you should be rewarded with some points. And so my bonus for the second round with a three seed differential would be three times three, which would be nine. Add in another three. Uh, take the square root, and that gives you 3.46. So a TCU win would be worth 6.46 points against the Michigan State three-point win. I hope that's clear. But I'll give you one last example. Let's say my Aggies make it to the Sweet 16, round three, against Kansas. Kansas is a one seed, New Mexico State a 12 seed. So if Kansas were to win, this is round three, so it's worth five points. Kansas would get five points. Or if you chose Kansas, you would get five points. So if New Mexico State were to win, it's an 11-point differential on the seeds. So it would be 11 times 5 plus 11, take the square root of the whole thing, and you will see that New Mexico State's win would be worth 13.12 points per round, uh, for that win against Kansas State. That may entice some people like me who went to school there to vote for them. Maybe, maybe not. I understand this system is a little complicated. I will leave charts for this in the description if you'd like to learn more about it. But tell me what you think. Have I come up with something good or is this just a total waste of everyone's time? I'd like to know what you think and let me know what scoring you're using for your brackets. Let me know in the comments. Peace. You can help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers by clicking the like button and subscribing. Thanks.